Aye. Councilman Paul Riddick, and then please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Heavenly <coughs> Father, we come to you this evening as humbly as we know how, thanking you for all the blessings you bestow upon us. We ask you to continue to bless our citizens, especially those citizens who have absolutely nothing and who are up against it financially. We thank you for the presence of the Norfolk State University basketball team. We thank you for allowing them to travel safely to and from their tournament. We thank you for their display of dignity and just good sportsmanship in their representing the Norfolk State University and the city of Norfolk during the NCAA tournament. We ask you to give us the ability to do this job in a fair and just manner. These and all the blessings we ask in thy name. Amen. 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 I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Great. Thank you very much. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Burford? Here. Mr. Protegiru? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smigel? Dr. Wibley? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The clerk will please read the resolution for the closed meeting. A resolution certifying a closed Aye. meeting of the Council of the City of Norfolk held in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're pleased to have all of you here, and we have some very special guests uh, this evening. Uh, for those of you who do not regularly attend our council sessions, what we do here is the process which we're going to follow is, first of all, we've got three ceremonial matters. And that includes acknowledging the presence of uh, our friends from Norfolk State University, Dr. Atwater, Marty Miller, the athletic director, and Coach Evans, as well as the team here. We have a couple. We have some Girl Scouts, and we have a, uh, a third ceremonial matter. After that, we will move directly to our regular agenda. We have uh, on the regular agenda public hearings, and then we'll move to the regular agenda. We have uh, a number of those matters. We'll vote on all those matters in just the way, way they are numbered on the printed docket. At the conclusion of our regular agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the council on a non-agenda item, as something that's not on the printed docket, uh, you'll be given that opportunity, and we're glad to hear from you there. All you have to do is have your name called, assign a slip of paper, which the clerk has made uh, available in the... In the uh, area uh, outside of the uh, council chambers before the meeting began. Okay, I got through that. Um, uh, let's, uh, we'd, we'd love to start with uh, Norfolk State University. And Dr. Atwater, would you like to come up? First of all, we are really honored to have you here tonight. We extended the invitation to the team and to the coach and to the athletic director, and we're just thrilled to have you here. I was with you uh, a few days ago at the inauguration, and that was, was, a, was quite an event. But what we wanted to do was acknowledge the great, um, uh, the great play of the Norfolk State University men's basketball team. We didn't have, an, we didn't have a chance. This happened so quickly. We didn't, with the inauguration and with the council schedule, we didn't have a chance to tell you uh, how proud we are of you and what great representatives you were of the, entire, uh, of the entire region, the state, wherever you came from, your own families your own uh, cast of friends, but also here of the city. And we felt that so deeply that we wanted you to come down here. We have a resolution to read, but all the council members here wanted to sort of bask in the glow of your success, your championship season, the great run that you had. And we just, we don't get a chance to tell you enough how proud we are of Norfolk State, but, but especially of this great run that you had with the MEAC championship, of course, you know, with the 15th seed. You know, beating Missouri, which man, we just went crazy over. I know every you all did too, but it was, it was, but and then the way you handled the success and how you spoke with the press and how you conducted yourselves, and maybe I'm stealing some of Dr. Atwater's thunder here, <laughs> but those of us who like to think we were, you know, I mean, we love to see athletic competition. We believe greatly in the virtues of that here in this city, and uh, uh, to have you here is very special for us, and so. I've asked Dr. Atwater if you'd like to make sure. uh, any comments. I've got the resolution. We'd love to hear from anybody. Coach, 
Coach. I know Marty's never been very shy about that. So <laughs> we're glad to hear from you. Go thank ahead. you, Mayor. I'll keep my uh, remarks brief. And uh, I just want to thank you, Mayor Frame, Vice Mayor Burfitt, and members of uh, Novak City Council for uh, this generous recognition. Novak State University and its men's Spartan basketball team take pride in bringing honor and national recognition to the city of Norfolk. We congratulate Coach Anthony Evans, his coaching staff, and the remarkable men's basketball team for a great season, uh, a MEAC championship, first ever in Division I play, and success, you know, in the NCAA tournament. Uh, that play against Missouri, the number 15 seed, Norfolk State, against the number two seed, Missouri, will always remain in my memory. Uh, it occurred on Inauguration Day. I was being inaugurated, and what an inauguration gift. <laughs> right. I haven't had a chance to thank these guys. That was a great inauguration uh, gift to actually beat the number two seed uh, and uh, be able to advance. Uh, this is the first time, you know, our men's team has actually played, you know, in the big dance, you know, in the NCAA Division I. I do not believe it will be the last time that they will be at the big dance. I think that... Uh, there are really good times ahead for them. The coaching is remarkable. Coach Anthony uh, Evans is to be commended for his excellent leadership. We've got a great athletic director, you know, in Marty Miller. And we just thank the city council for uh, this generous uh, recognition. Uh, we believe that it's our role as a university to bring pride and to be a great resource for the city of Norfolk. And we hope, you know, that this success demonstrates uh, the beginning of a renewed uh, commitment on our part at Norfolk State to be a stronger resource, you know, for Norfolk City and for uh, helping to advance and be a great steward, you know, for uh, for this great city. Thank you for the recognition. Well, thank you, Doctor. <clears throat> uh, on behalf of the team and the coaches, we'd like to thank you for having us down here. This is indeed an honor for us. We had a great season this year, and to be recognized for what we did uh, not just on the court, but, but the public speaking, talking to the media, all the, the, the outpour of thank yous and appreciating what we've done. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Um, I, I know we, we may have some members of the city council who would like to say uh, a few words. And Would anybody like to? Yeah. Mr. Redding? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I'd like to say to... Uh, to Marty Miller, that I no longer have to defend you to the lunch punch. As athletic director at Norfolk State, you've earned it now. Uh, Norfolk State had a great football season this year, too. So, Marty, I was one of the only guys that stuck with you, you know, during the dark days. <laughs> but now everybody's with you. But I, I do want to um, commend the uh, ball players on the manner in which they played basketball. And this goes for the football team as well. Uh, there's a lot of character uh, in the student athletes that we have at Norfolk State University. You don't have any flagrant fouls. You know, you don't have any late hits on the football field. And so I think that uh, says a lot to the coaching staff at Norfolk State. It says a lot to the administration that we're bringing ball players to Norfolk that come to play the game, win, lose, or draw. They're going to play it fair. Um, uh, Charles Barkley uh, gave uh, O'Quinn uh, a great compliment. And I think most of my friends uh, heard that compliment when he talked about the coaches uh, at Norfolk State. And this was the only scholarship that he was offered. And he said that uh, he didn't know where he would be without Norfolk State. And I think that says a lot to Norfolk State. It says a lot to coaches who would go out and find a ball player. And so I would just wish you continued success with what you're doing. You're doing a great job. Just you know, keep it up. And Marty. Don't have a losing season, Doc, because you'll be up there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Vice Mayor. I, I would just like to say uh, congratulations, uh, Doc Dagwater, uh, Coach Evans, and, and Marty. Marty, you've had a, a successful season from bowling to, you know, uh, cross-country track to basketball to football. Uh, you guys have done a tremendous job at Norfolk State, um, and you, you're commended for that. Coach Evans? Uh, you know, with success like you've had, I tell you, we want to keep you here now. So, Marty, take care of him. We don't want to lose him, you know. Uh, I just think you've done a tremendous job with the young men and the way they conducted themselves uh, throughout this whole process. And I want to thank the university be because, because of you, 
we're fortunate to have the MEAC tournament here next year. So we, we get an opportunity to see you right at home. So thank you for, uh, for what you've done and thank you for the success you will have in the future. Um, I just wanted to commend also the team. I am not a big sports fan, but I will say that never again will people go Norfolk State who? Because uh, you all did go to the big dance. So to the coach and to the athletic director and to Dr. Atwater, um, we just want to commend you and to the team to an outstanding performance. You guys had an opportunity and you didn't flinch. You took full advantage of it and it took you far. So I'm sure that we will see you next time in the final four. In the ma I still haven't figured out what the madness is about March, but you know, you guys, you, you brought some excitement to it for us here in Norfolk, Virginia, and you definitely put us on the map in a national way, and you are definitely to be commended for your sportsmanship and for your all-around activities um, in in the championship game. So thank you for what you've brought to Norfolk, and congratulations. Um, I have only one quick request. I expect you all to be there next year. And I'm hoping that somebody ahead of time teaches Marv Albert how to say Norfolk. <laughs> <laughs> it drove well, me crazy. <laughs> uh, it was great to read about you in the New York Times and the Washington Post and national publications, which actually, I mean, took great delight in the fact that you, that, you, know, you beat Missouri. And I mean, it was really quite a tribute, and to the way you played and conducted yourselves as well, and we all... You know, we all just enjoyed that immensely. And I mean, just just looking at you guys seated out here tonight is clear that the coach has done a great job in molding you guys and and uh, you know, and getting you ready for almost any sort of challenge. I've got the resolution, Dr. Atwater. Maybe I, I'll read it, and we've got a copy for all of you as, as well. And it reads: uh, The City of Norfolk uh, resolution. Whereas after playing 15 years at the Division One level, the Norfolk State University men's basketball team under the leadership of head coach Anthony Evans, made history in the 2011-2012 season with the team's first MEAC title and first appearance in the NCAA Division I basketball tournament. Whereas the Spartans headed into the MEAC tournament with a 22-game win record, the first season since <clears throat> entering Division I play, the team won 20 or more games. Whereas the Spartans clinched the MEAC title on March the 10th, 2012, with a 73-70 victory over the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats, thereby gaining an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Whereas on March 16th, the 15-seeded Spartans made history by defeating the second-seeded Big 12 champion Missouri Tigers 86-84 to in the first round of the playoffs in Omaha, Nebraska, becoming only the fifth, fifth 15th-seeded team to defeat a second-seeded team. Whereas the Council of the City of Norfolk is extremely proud of the Norfolk State University men's basketball team and wishes to recognize its achievement. Now, therefore, be it resolved, number one, that the Council of the City of Norfolk hereby congratulates the Norfolk State University men's basketball team on the occasion of its historic record-breaking 2011-2012 season that included the MEAC championship and first ever appearance in the NCAA Division I tournament. In section two, that this resolution be recorded in the permanent proceedings of the city council and a copy be presented to Coach Evans and his team. And it's signed by me, Paul Frame, the mayor, and the clerk as well. So, Dr. Atwater, maybe I, I'll give you this, and we've also got one for everybody else. Thank you very much, Dr. Appreciate you coming down here for this. Okay. <laughs> one last chance. Coach Evans, would you like to, would any of the members of the team like to say a word, or should we? Kyle, would you like to say something? We'd love to hear from you. Great. Uh, how you doing? Um, on behalf of the team, I'd like to say thank you for this wonderful recognition. I mean, put a lot of hard work into the gym and to practice and things like that. So to be recognized by the city of Norfolk, a team that we have written across our chest, um, it feels great. It feels great. It feels, um, feels like you're being appreciated and all your hard work pays off. We just want to say thank you on behalf of the seniors. On behalf of the team. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. The pleasure is all ours, believe me. We're going to throw a great MEAC tournament for you next year, and we're going to, I mean, we're going to make it, you know, maybe the best tournament you've ever been involved in. So thanks. Thank you, Doctor. If you guys would like to go, that would, that would be fine. Okay. Picture? Hmm? And a photo, Mayor? Oh, do you? Do you? Next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tournament. We're going to
No, no, no. We'll come down there. Or you, why don't you just line up down here? Come down here. I hate to tell you. Who's got the camera? Okay. We got a bunch of cameras. Could you guys come up here? And, I mean, come right here, Marty, and we'll just stand back here. Hey, Marty. How you yeah, doing? no, no, turn around. Go ahead. Go ahead. Guys, I'm totally blocked. Okay. <laughs> All right. I know what I'm saying. And we're standing, we're standing about a foot and a half. Who's the uh, short guys here that I can stand behind? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll not, not all Spartans are five foot nine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Terry, we're standing up. We're, okay. Right, you got, you got it. it. Oh, he's got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, congratulations, man. I know you work with your big man. Good. And I thought that was you. Yeah, my brother Ed says so too. Of course, you're all. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> the ones that are less tall. Than the front ones. Great. We got it. Good. Okay. All right, everybody. You can't see me. You can't see this camera. Move a little bit, please. Okay. And some people you too. See? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. I can okay, see. ready? See the camera? One, I can see the headlight. Two, I'll take three shots. One, two, three. And one more. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Thank you very much. Great. Thank, Thank you all. Okay. okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Y'all take care. If we can do anything, okay, we're ready. All right, we can help you with anything, Coach. Thanks, Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Marcus, make sure we get Remember, Wilson, can you still dunk? That's what I want to know. Sure. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Yeah. We can. Yeah. Good. Thanks. 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 Way to break that. It's a lot. Do the best. It was good. Thanks good to see you. Job. All right, Kyle. Thank you. So what year are you? Yeah. Let me know if we can help you. Okay. I like all the okay. people. Okay. We'll go okay. and okay. and stay from Have a good one. They were out of the moment. <laughs> they, <were> out of <laughs> the moment. <laughs> uh, they live over in Oakland. It's very ruined. Yeah. Are you watching? Yeah. 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 Talking about you guys. Yeah. Keep yeah. pressing. Yeah. 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 Right. Really enjoyed your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You got a... Okay. Yes, I will. Thanks so much. Uh, Trey. Uh, Trey. Uh, Trey. Uh, Trey. Uh, Trey. Uh, Trey. Oh, yeah, you're right. I do. I can't The Missouri game. Uh, you did? Yeah. No, the ODU game. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, he's going to be. Now for the encore, right? We This is Girl Scout uh, month, and we have a proclamation. And right. Kathy, who's going to come up and get it? Marcy. Okay, I'm going to read the proclamation, and we'd love to have all the Girl Scouts stand up. Why don't you all come up front here? And then we... We'll um, hear from your spokesman. Okay. The proclamation reads, Whereas Juliet Gordon Lowe founded Girl Scouts of the USA on March the 12th, 1912, whereas Girl Scouting has been inspiring and in teaching girls in Virginia for nearly 100 years, whereas more than 22,000 current Girl Scouts and adult members in the Girl Scout Council of Colonial Coast <laughs> and millions nationwide will be celebrating this American tradition, Whereas throughout its distinguished history, Girl Scouting has welcomed girls and women from every background to join and has inspired them with courage and confidence and character to make this world a better place. And whereas through <clears throat> the Girl Scout leadership experience, girls develop the skills and lessons that will serve them throughout their lives so that they may contribute to their communities and to the Commonwealth of Virginia. Whereas Girl Scouting takes an active role in increasing girls' awareness of the opportunities in math and science, sports, technology, and many other fields of interest that can expand their horizons. Now, therefore, I, Paul Frame, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, to hereby applaud and commend the Girl Scouts of the USA for supporting the development of Virginia's girls in Norfolk and throughout the Commonwealth, and to hereby proclaim the, March, the month of March 2012 as Girl Scout Month in the city of Norfolk and do further extend congratulations to the Girl Scouts, Girl Scouts of the USA upon this most notable occasion of the 100th anniversary, given under my hand this 27th day of March 2012. You're ready. You can do it. Thank you very much for coming down here, by the way. This is a great turnout. Thank you. Mayor Frame, Vice Mayor Burfoot, members of council, Mr. Jones. My name is Schaefer Shelton, and I'm a junior Girl Scout at the Williams School here in Norfolk. Girl Scout Council of Colonial Coast, a council that serves over 16,000 girls, will be among the 112 councils across the country celebrating the 100th anniversary of Girl Scouts here in 2012. We invite friends in the community to join us in recognizing this time-honored movement, the world's largest voluntary organization, for girls. Since 1912, 
Millions of girls benefited from the Girl Scout leadership experience. We continue to find new ways to help girls and young women develop a sense of values and make meaningful contributions to society. As the world changes and becomes more complex, Girl Scouting moves forward with time. Girls need and want an all-girl environment where their special needs and interests are met, a place where the issues they face can be addressed. Girl Scouts prepare girls for dealing with today's challenges as well as preparing them for their futures. Girl Scouts is helping build girls of courage, confidence, and character who will make the world a better place. My fellow Norfolk Girl Scouts and I have worked to make our city better by cleaning up our neighborhoods and waterways, by holding food and book drives to help our most vulnerable neighbors and learning leadership skills that will help us in discovering the strengths of our community and its needs, connecting to our neighbors, and taking action to make Norfolk a better place for all of us. Thank you for taking the time this evening to recognize Girl Scouts and what they are offering to our community. Well, great. Well, thank you for thank coming you. down here. Great. Work. great. Very much. Cookies. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's like the Tootsie Roll. Okay, you get anything now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do they give them we'll praise? Another proclamation. <laughs> give them a praise. Okay. Good. Well, those raspberry cookies that they were selling this year were hot. I give up. I tell you. Got in the box of those up. Thin mints and Samoas. Boxes right now. Samoas are the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. No cookies. Thank you. 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 Oh, okay. One more guy needs to get in front of the room here. Yeah. Okay. Come on up here. 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 Thank you. Thanks, ladies. Thank you for coming. Thanks for the cookies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't put them down, man. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Congratulations. Okay. Yeah. Thank you all. For, thank you for coming. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Probably put in order. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we have one, um, one other very important, and I do mean important, um, ceremonial matter. And I, I, saw, I see Steve Hawks. Steve, you want to come on up with uh, Maddie Satterfield, as well as uh, Al Stewart and Betty Wade. Cool, and I see Jan out there. But there's Betty Wade. Please come on to the podium, and we can. <clears throat> we have a, a proclamation which has to do with Child Abuse Prevention Month. Come on, Jane. You're gonna get up here. Okay. Yeah. All right. I saw Al. Okay. Good evening. All right. The proclamation reads: Whereas preventing child abuse and neglect is a community problem that depends on involvement among people throughout the community. Whereas child maltreatment occurs when people find themselves in stressful situations without community resources and don't know how to cope. Whereas the majority of child abuse cases stem from situations and conditions that are preventable in an engaged and supportive community. Whereas all citizens should become involved in supporting families and raising their children in a safe, nurturing environment. Whereas effective child abuse uh, prevention programs succeed because of partnerships created among social service agencies, schools, faith communities, civic organizations, law enforcement agencies, and the business community. Now, therefore, I, Paul Frame, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, to hereby proclaim the month of April 2012 as Child Abuse Prevention Month in the City of Norfolk and call this observance to the attention of all of our citizens. And it's given under my hand this 27th day of March. Who's going to take this? Steve, you're going to take it? Okay, thank you. And we'd love to hear from, from someone. 
the special coordination. Betty Wade, good to see you again down here. Okay, Al. Mayor Frame, Vice Mayor Burf Burfitt, Council Members, thank you for this proclamation bringing this issue of child abuse and neglect to the attention of our citizens. During state fiscal year 11, 30 Virginia children died as the direct result of child abuse and neglect. One fatality is too many. Fortunately, 30 is 14 less than the previous year, so we are making progress. But as I said, one is too many. I accept this proclamation on behalf of our department and our community partners that you see represented here. Folks that are working together to reduce the number of fatalities and incidents of child abuse and neglect to zero. Thank you very much for your attention to this and bringing it to the public's awareness. Well, thank you for, for coming down here and thanks for what you do on a daily basis for our children. This is very important, obviously, to all of us as well as the fact that you're so committed is important. So, Betty Wade, thank you very much. Maddie, everybody. Jan, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank okay. you. Can, I, can I say something? You know, for this week, it, it occurred to me that we see all of these um, sad songs playing behind dogs that are being abused. And it crossed my mind that with the alarming number of children that we're seeing abused, that we don't see enough public service announcements that talk to that, or should I say speaks to that. So maybe we can get you know, the country to see that child abuse is something that we need to really speak to and try to do what we can do to curb child abuse, whether it's uh, you know, through intervention or whatever. And I'm sure you people at social services can figure out some kind of way to get this promoted. Thank, Thank you. Sir. I was going to say, Betty, we're going to have a banner night on Thursday at 4, 5, 6, mm -hmm. set another record. And I'd like to encourage all the citizens to come out to one of the participating restaurants because this is their big child abuse celebrity waiter and waitress night, and uh, this is where we got to get these folks some money. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Okay. Okay. That concludes the ceremonial portion of tonight's agenda. Uh, we'll move directly then to public hearing number one, please. Public hearing one scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on February 28, 2012. Under state law, public notice having been inserted in the local press to hear comments on the conveyance of two gym lots to James E. Newby II on property located at the north side of Holly Point Road. <coughs> All right, there's no members of the public signed up to address the council on this issue. If there are no questions, you can call the roll, please. An ordinance authorizes the conveyance to James E. Newby II of certain parcels of property acquired by the city pursuant to Section 58.1-3970.1 of the Code of Virginia and approving the terms and conditions of the agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing two. Public hearing two scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on February, February 28, 2012 to hear comments on the conveyance of a gym lot to Mary W. Hayden on property located at the north side of Burridge Road. All right, there's no members of the public signed up on this matter either. If there are no questions, you can call the roll. I have an ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Mary W. Hayden of certain parcels of property acquired by the city pursuant to Section 58.1-3970.1 of the Code of Virginia, approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement, dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing three, please. Public hearing three scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on February 28, 2012. On the application of John D. Hines for Old Dominion University for the closing, vacating, and discontinuing of a portion of Elkhorn Avenue from the northern line of 43rd Street northwardly to the southern line of 49th Street by 5 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. There's no one signed up in opposition. On behalf of Old Dominion, here we have uh, David Harnage here to answer any questions, and Mr. John Stronach to answer any questions if there are any. And look like it. Call the roll, please. I have an ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing a portion of Elkhorn Avenue authorizing the conveyance by quit claim deed to the visitors of Old Dominion University of any interest the city may have in the underlying fee of said portion of Elkhorn Avenue and accepting the dedication of a public utility easement by the visitors of Old Dominion University in the terms of the deed of easement authorizing the vacation of a waterline easement dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. 
Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you for coming down, guys. A public hearing four, please. Public hearing four scheduled for the state pursuant to action of council on February 28, 2012, on the application of Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority for the closing, vacating, and discontinuing of a portion of the south side of East Virginia Beach Boulevard between Cecilia Street and Hanson Avenue and a portion of a 10 foot lane from the eastern line of Cecilia Street by 5 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. All right, Mr. Peter Oberly is here on behalf of the Housing Authority. If anyone has any questions, there's no one signed up they in opposition. Plans for that property. Peter, we, we, we did look at some. Uh, they talked about single family homes for that, that that area there. But the the process will, will will still be the same in terms of the have they already looked at the types of homes or are we gonna we haven't gotten to that point yet? Uh, we have not gotten to that. What we're doing is establishing a new subdivision. Okay. It will be zoned single family housing. It is, is an R eleven, mm -hmm. the rest of And it will be Gill, go through the Gill. Yes, sir. Okay, excellent. Thank That's you. good news. Thank okay. You. All right, call the roll. Thank An you. An ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing a portion of East Virginia Beach Boulevard and a 10 foot lane and authorizing the conveyance to the abutting property owner of any interest the city may have in the underlying fee of said portion of East Virginia Beach Boulevard and a 10 foot lane dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing five. Yeah, public hearing five scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on February 28, 2012 on the application of Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority to amend the general plan uh, from industrial transportation utility to medium density res residential and to change the zoning from C1 limited commercial to conditional R11 moderate density multiple family district. And again, uh, Peter Ober Oberly is here to answer questions. And planning Called Commission recommends approval. And I have two ordinances for this, Mr. President. The first is an ordinance to amend the general plan of Norfolk 1992 so as to change the land use designation for property located at 956 to 960 Cecilia Street from industrial transportation utility to medium density residential. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The second is an ordinance to rezone property located at 956 to 960 Cecilia Street from C1 Limited Commercial and, <coughs> and Broad Creek Gateway Overlay District to Conditional R11 Multiple, multiple Family District and Broad Creek Gateway Overlay District. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing six. Public hearing six scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on February 28, 2012 on the application of the city of Norfolk to amend the zoning ordinance of the city, uh, amending sections 2-3, 4-12.5, 8-6, and 13-6.12 to make minor technical changes and corrections to four sections of the zoning ordinance. There is no one signed up on this matter either, so you can call the roll. An ordinance to amend and reordain certain sections of the zoning ordinance of the City of Norfolk 1992 so as to make typographical corrections and adjustments and to normalize the references made to the uses of hotel, motel, and art studio in the table of principal uses for downtown districts. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. <coughs> Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That concludes the public hearings. The consent agenda. Uh, one, more. one more. One more. Yes, sir. Public hearing seven, Mr. Uh, President. I'm sorry. Public. That's right. Public hearing seven. Uh, scheduled for this day, pursuant to action of council on February 28, 2012, on the application of the City Planning Commission to amend the zoning ordinance to amend Chapter 16 signs and revise regulations pertaining to electronic changeable copy signs and public service message boards. Planning Commission recommends approval. And I have an ordinance to amend reordain section 16 3, 4, and 6 of the zoning ordinance of the City of Norfolk 1992 in order to prohibit electronic changeable copy signs and to refine regulations pertaining to the location of public service message boards. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The consent agenda, and there are three items on the consent agenda. Would any member of the council like to have any one of these matters uh, considered separately? All right, call the roll, please. <clears throat> Approve the consent agenda. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1. 
Or one is an ordinance accepting the sum of $134,463 from the Chesapeake Bay Trust Living Shoreline Grant Program, $20,000 from the Norfolk Wetland Board, special revenue accounts, and $10,000 from the Department of Planning special revenue account to hire a contractor to build a living shoreline erosion control project in Collie Bay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2? An ordinance to amend and reordain sections 11.1-5 and 11.1-5.1 of the Code of the City of Norfolk 1979 so as to update meeting requirements, terms of service, and membership requirements for the local building code Board of Appeals. Dispense with the charter requirement for the ordinance. <coughs> Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3. A resolution approving the exercise by the Norfolk Airport Authority of powers conferred by Chapter 463 of the Acts of Assembly of 1948 is amended in conjunction with the issuance of Norfolk Collegiate School of not to exceed $7 million of the authority's revenue bonds to assist in the financing of the construction and equipping of a fine arts center to be located at 7336 Granby Street. No questions? Okay, call the roll. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Uh, and this is really a, a, a great step forward for us here. So, R4, please. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an entertainment establishment on property located at 5957 East Virginia Beach Boulevard. By 5 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a commercial drive through facility on property located at 1105 North Military Highway by 5 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. Mr. Chris Clayton. Mr. Clayton, are you here? Okay. To answer questions on behalf of the uh, um, applicant. Is this a chain restaurant? I, I've never heard Look of out. it. Is it a chain restaurant? It, like a national chain? It is? Not a national chain. Okay. There's about 100 stores he has in North Carolina and South Carolina. He's just getting into the Virginia market. It's a totally family business. There's no franchisees. So he's really looking forward to coming to this. And they're tearing down the building that's there? Building a brand new one. All right. Do all your um, restaurants have uh, the, um, uh, you know, the drive through Yes, they do. Um, this particular site has a double drive-through concept. Some of his stores have single drive-throughs, but very, very few of them. And does this drive-through uh, comply with the? Is Frank here? Trees. Yeah, and the, I mean, I'm totally against drive-throughs, but I know I'm in the minority. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the drive-through does com fully comply with the city ordinance requirements for commercial drive-throughs. So, what does a do double mean? It's two cars. It's two. Rally. means that it's approaching the business from both sides. It's a concept that's becoming more common. Is that like the Chick Fil A in Virginia Beach, where you can go in on one side, you can go down the other I'm not familiar with side? You'll see. But Pembroke. Rallies. Rallies. Okay. Generally has okay. 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 both sides. Okay. <laughs> okay. How many people does the store employ? I'm just curious. Uh, bad example. Um. <laughs> I would, <laughs> I would guess in the neighborhood of 10 to 12, something like that, that Good. individual store. I will tell you, he's looking at three other sites in Norfolk as we speak that I've already started designing, so he's, he'll be familiar with it shortly. So. All with drive-thrus. I'm sorry? All with drive-thrus. To my knowledge, yes. All with employees, <laughs> though. Factor. Correct. <laughs> okay. It's a pollution <laughs> factor. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? No. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit off lot parking on property located at 7428 Tidewater Drive. A 5 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? <laughs> I R7. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an eating and drinking establishment on property located at 8401 Hampton Boulevard, Suite 4. Planning Commission by 5-0 vote recommends approval. 
dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. We are eight. An ordinance authorizing the acquisition of an easement for ingress and egress from James E. Turner, Jr., Elizabeth N. Turner, and Richard L. Turner over certain property located in Suffolk, Virginia for the sum of $66,955, approving the terms and conditions of the attached deed of easement and authorizing the expenditure of the sum of $76,955 from funds heretofore appropriated to pay the purchase price and the other transaction costs relative to the acquisition of the easement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or nine. An ordinance authorizing the purchase from Barbara B. Nelms and Robert L. Nelms, trustees of the Barbara B. Nelms Revocable Trust of certain property located in the city of Suffolk and commonly known as 4036 Godwin Boulevard for the sum of $778,545 in accordance with the attached purchase and sale agreement and authorizing the expenditure of a sum of up to $793,545 from funds heretofore appropriated to pay the purchase price and other transaction costs. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R10. An ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund to United States Gypsum Company based upon the correction of personal property tax assessment for tax years 2011, 2010 and 2011. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or 11. An ordinance authorizing the acquisition of a permanent utility easement from Edith C. Stowe over, under, and across certain property located in the city of Portsmouth, Virginia for the sum of $5,000, authorizing the city manager to accept the deed of easement on behalf of the city, and authorizing the expenditure of the sum of $10,000 from funds heretofore appropriated to pay the purchase price and other transaction costs relative to the acquisition of the easement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R13? 12, Mr. President. 12. Yes, sir. An ordinance authorizing the acquisition of an, in, of an easement for ingress and egress from Barbara B. Nelms, Robert Nelms, and trustees of the Barbara B. Nelms Revocable Trust over certain property located in Suffolk, Virginia for the sum of $21,455, approving the terms and conditions of the deed of easement, authorizing the expenditure of the sum of $31,455 to pay the purchase price and other transaction costs relative to the acquisition of the easement dispensed with Can the Can I just ask a quick question for you? you know, I know why we have to do this. I'm just curious with, it's a $21,000 land purchase, but the closing costs are up to 10000 Is that just a flat number we just offer, but it might only be $2,000 uh, of closing costs? Why is it so high for cl closing costs for that little amount? Um, it, it, it's uh, title insurance, um, maybe demolition. Um, what else could it be? Oh, environmental review. Um, I, I'm not sure of the precise amounts, but the, it, th those, were, those are the sorts of items that compose it. Okay. So demolition money could be as part of that? Y y yes. That, that, uh, uh, um, I I'm not certain on this 10000 but that uh, um, those are the categories that comprise the closing costs for us. Well, it says other transaction costs relative to the acquisition of these. So maybe, as you've said, it could be beyond that permit. So I think we had this on another issue too. Right, the one before it. Yeah. I don't know. Just closing costs in and of themselves are not usually half. Here's the right. Question. But if there's other, it's simply a plug mo number provided by the real estate office. I think the cost will actually be much less. They just generally stick in around ten thousand dollars for closing costs, no matter what. Okay, that's so what you I just thought. authorized I just, to spend it, but you may not spend right. it. Right. Exactly. Okay, that's why I just thought it, it caught my eye that it just seemed. Well, it's an exact amount, as it shows. So it's a good question. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Are you ready? Call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement <clears throat> for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protogero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. 
R13. An ordinance to change the name of 23rd Bay Street from East Ocean View Avenue to its intersection with Shore Drive. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? I just want to say, when we put descriptions like this out, this goes out to the public. There's, no, there's not a better way to frame this than we're going to change the name. So I actually had people asking me if we were going to name it Paul Frame Road. You know, I'm just saying, it, can't we be a little bit more specific with some of these to give people, I'm not trying to nitpick, but it's just. I, I agree completely. I mean, I, I really do. Just, it's just it's some good old to me that it's language in there would have helped. I mean, everybody understands why they're doing this. It's just they're moving the road for Homerama, so they have to kind of close one part and open another. It's just, anyway, I. But you're not voting for Paul Frame. No. Well, that would, one day. <laughs> one day you'll get a road, Paul. We'll give you a school. We'll give me a school, school or a courthouse, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Dr. Wibley. Am I voting no, I for the change? Or, uh, <laughs> Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? The better, Aye. right? Mr. Frame? Sooner the better, yes. Okay. Yes. Where are we? Nine, R14. An ordinance permitting Eastern Virginia Medical Center to encroach five feet more or less into the right of way at 720 Fairfax Avenue with a 24 feet two inch tall sign mounted on the side of a parking garage. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R15. R15 is an ordinance dedicating certain property owned by the city of Norfolk for the widening of North Perry Highway between Lowry Road and Robin Hood Road. <clears throat> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R16. An ordinance accepting the dedication by Blandine Espejo and the Espejo Family Limited Partnership, RLL. P, um, FKA, Espejo Family Limited Partnership to the City of Norfolk of a 15-foot wide permanent utility easement authorizing the city manager to accept the deed of dedication of easement on behalf of the city and authorizing the vacation and release of two existing easements upon certain conditions. Dispense with the charter Second, report. Mr. Isley, Sorry. are you here? Okay. Well, we don't have any questions. I just wanted to thank you for coming down. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R17. An ordinance accepting the dedication by Blandine Espejo of the Espejo Family Limited Partnership uh, to the City of Norfolk of a 15-foot wide permanent easement for public utility purposes and authorizing the city manager to accept the deed of easement on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. <coughs> Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R18. <coughs> An ordinance accepting a training mini grant award of $2,200 from the Virginia Department of Fire Programs and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds for the purchase of two desktop computers with OS preloaded, a CRT monitor, etc., from the Department of Fire Rescue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. We are 19. <clears throat> An ordinance accepting grant funds in the amount of $10,000 from Liberty Mutual Insurance for the 2011 Be Smart Fire Safety Pledge Program and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the funds for the purchase of equipment and supplies uh, for the Department of Fire Rescue's smoke detector program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? I don't know if this matters, Bernard, but I represent Liberty Mutual Insurance Company. Does that have anything to do with this? Maybe you could have got him to give us 20000 This is just accepting the grant. 10000 And that used to work. Uh, no, you, you are free to vote on this. You're required to vote on this. Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R20? An ordinance authorizing the purchase 
from Ines Huey et al. of certain property located in the city of Norfolk and commonly known as 2900 East Virginia Beach Boulevard for the sum of $80,000, approving the terms and conditions of the purchase and sale agreement and authorizing the expenditure of the sum of up to $125,000 from funds heretofore appropriated to pay the purchase price and other transaction costs. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. <coughs> Mr. Burfitt. I just want to thank the administration. Thank you. Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. They don't say we haven't done anything for you uh, recently. R21. That might have been an emphasis. An ordinance to amend and reordain the Norfolk City Code 1979 is amended to add one new subsection B to section 37-44 and to amend and reordain sections 37-74F so as to provide certain death benefits for deceased employees in military service and to provide for the payment of eligible rollover distributions to certain beneficiaries. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Yeah, help me understand this a little better, Mr. Fishko. Of that, uh, it, in order to be a qualified plan under ERISA, mm -hmm. we have to include certain provisions, one of which is benefits for the military. Okay. So if a person were to leave our workforce and have to go to a war and die, okay. they'd be eligible to receive death benefits under our retirement okay. plan. Okay. The other provision is likewise required to stay in compliance and it defines what plans we're required to roll over into. Right. So if somebody had a, 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 a share they could take out, so it's it's really housekeeping to make okay. sure that we stay in compliance okay. with right. the IRS provisions. Thank you, sir. You read his items, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R-22. An ordinance authorizing the quit claim to Old Dominion University of any interest in some vacated sections of 45th and 46th Streets in the Lamberts Point area of the city. And Mr. Pearson is here to answer any questions on behalf of Old Dominion if we have any. Okay, call the roll. Please. Dispense with a charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R23. An ordinance approving a memorandum of understanding between the city and the Norfolk Community Services Board concerning the board's transition to an administrative policy board. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, Mr. President, I have one additional item. Okay. And one housekeeping item. Okay. Um, the additional item is uh, a resolution Captioned an appointment, a uh, resolution appointing or reappointing 30 persons to two boards and one commission for certain terms. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagle. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. The housekeeping matter is a vote on the Norfolk State University resolution. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Right. Okay. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. That was housekeeping. So. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, that concludes the formal uh, portion of tonight's agenda. Thank you for.